In this video, we are going to continue with inverse functions. You will find this on page 109 in the Namibia AS level mathematics textbook y equals mx plus c to success. The graph of a function and its inverse. We graph a one-to-one -one function f of x and its inverse f minus 1x, the inverse function of x, the following will always be true. The graph of the inverse will always be a reflection of the graph of fx in the line y equals x, the line at 45 degrees to the x-axis. This is because, because f, the function and the inverse, is equal to x, and the inverse and the function will be, this both will be equal to x. In a many-to-many, -many, a many-to-one function, functions, the same will be true. But then you must restrict the domain to guarantee that the inverse is also a function. So you restrict it so that it becomes a one-to-one, -one, then the inverse will also be a function. Let's look at an example. It's always better to explain. Okay, so this is the function. This is the inverse. Can you see it's a reflection in the line y equals x? Okay, and that's how functions and inverse functions look. And um, if I just do the test, mm, I'm just going to show you here. Okay, this is a one-to-one. -one. This is also a one-to-one. -one. Okay, but just be careful. Um, let's just see, in this case, it's one-to-one. -one, and this is like this is also one-to-one. -one. And the horizontal, horizontal tests tell, tell us, uh, the, the vertical tests say it's a function. And the horizontal tests tell us it's a one-to-one -one or many-to-one. Let's look at an example. To make it bigger. The function f is defined as this. Is x is an element of real numbers. Sketch a single diagram, the graph of y equals fx, and the inverse, making the relationship between the graphs clear. Okay, so first find the inverse of the function. So I'm, I'm doing this, I make it y, I swap the x and the y, I make y the subject, and this is the inverse. So now sketch the two graphs, just use a table. But I use the inverse, so if I use this coordinates, I just basically swap it around. So choose x values that will not lead to fractions. Okay, so I'm, the, the thing is the problem with this, this inverse one. So if you say, um, say it's negative 4 minus, so it's 2 over 3. So let's just see. Um, so basically I just swap this two. So let's just see. Oh, no, it's negative 4, negative, so it's negative 6, and that's why it's negative 2. And then 5 minus 2, so that, so, so just be careful for this one. So the best will be to first choose values for this one. So this is 3 over 3 is 1, and 8, and this, because this one is not a problem. And basically you can then just swap it. Okay. So basically, I just plot the points, plot the points, and then I see that I, if I draw a line y equals x, that it will be a reflection, so that it will be inverse. From the graphs, you can see that f minus the inverse is a reflection in the line y equals x. Okay. It's actually just a proof to show you that the two graphs will be a reflection in the line y equals x. I think we can just do one. You can stop the video and let's just do number one. And again, you can continue the video as soon as you are finished. Okay, so if we start with number one, now this is G. Now, this is usually in the mapping notation, but if you rewrite it, write it in normal notation, makes it easier. So I think the best will be first to get the inverse because sketch a single diagram, the graph of the original and the inverse, making the relationship between the two graphs clear. Okay, so let's first find the inverse. Make it y. And then make this a x and make this a y. And then x minus 3 equals 2 
and then I divide 2 and I divide 2, so therefore, um, and now I can make a g minus 1x equals x minus 3 over 2. Okay. Now, if I'm going to, to make a sketch, I think it's better to, to work with this. So, um, I can work with negative values also, or I can just plot the two points. I can see where it cuts the x-axis and where it cuts the y-axis. I can even do. But let's do it with a table, because I showed you a table in the previous book. And I'm going to start with this table. Okay. Let's see. So if I take a negative value, so negative 3, I think negative 3 is a good value. So, oh, don't forget, I think it's better, I'm just going to show you, that it's better that I call this g minus 1. Although it's x, but it's better that you see it. So if it's negative 3, so it's negative 6 divided by 2, and that's negative 3. Um, Zero will not be good. Uh, uh, let's just see negative 1. Negative 1 will be good. Because then it's negative 4 divided by 2. And that will be negative 2. And then let's see if it's 1. Uh, 1 minus 3. So 1 minus 3 is going to be negative 2. So let's make it 1. So it's also going to be, let me just see. So this was negative, and this is um, negative 2, it's also going to be negative 1. Okay. So, let's do the next one. Then, if we do the reverse, okay, then it's going to be x, and it's going to be gx. And if I do the reverse, then it's negative 3 and negative 3, and it's negative 2 and negative um, 1, and it's negative 1 and 1. Let's do the graph. I'm going to make a grid because usually it helps me, otherwise... So let's just get the lines. Let's get a color that will stand out a little bit. It will work. Okay, and now I'm just going to get my graph. So this is going to be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. This is 1, 2, 3. This is 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2 negative 3. This is my x and this is my y. So let's just plot my yellow one. So it's negative 3 and 3. Okay. And it's going to be uh, negative 1 and negative 2. And it's going to be 1 and negative 1. 1 and negative 1. So my line is going to be here. Okay, now my green one, let's just do my green one, it's also negative 3 and 3, and then it's negative 2 and negative 1, okay, and then it's going to be uh, negative 1 and 1, and if I draw my line, and it's going to cut there, okay. And if I draw the line y equals x, and remember, that means, um, if I want to show you, it's going to be 1 and 1, 2 and 2, 3 and 3, negative. And if I draw my line, okay. can you see? And I can say, ending up, so therefore, gx and g minus 1x are 
reflections in the line y is x and therefore inverse functions. No, oh, sorry. Yes. Or inverse. Okay, and that's how you do it.